If your winter riding is anything like ours here at GMBN, then your bike's gonna have to put up with all the abrasion and wear that a wet, muddy winter puts on your drivetrain and everything else. So give your bike a bit of a spring clean and it's gonna be prepped and prime for summer trails. Well, first up, before we get in the workshop, let's give the bike a bit of a clean. It's pretty filthy, so you wanna make sure that there's nothing on there that's in a sort of a bad state. Work your way around, make sure everything's clean, give your transmission a bit of a clean. And whilst you're doing it, it gives you the opportunity to make sure there's no sort of damage that's gonna need fixing, like frame cracks or slashes in your tires, anything like that on the way around. Give that bike a clean and then we'll see you upstairs in the workshop. So with your bike being at least sort of respectably clean, now you can have a decent look at it and see what things you need to refresh on there. Now some things are gonna be replaceable, i.e. changing your derailleur cables if they're a bit sticky. You might also find some damaged parts and components on there. Now this is an ideal time of year to replace those, so either you can do that yourself by following one of our other how-to videos, or if you're unsure, you can take it to your local bike shop. Now I like to work from the front of the bike to the back of the bike, that way I can be systematic and not miss anything. So first up, I'm just gonna inspect the tires, make sure there's no nicks or cuts or anything in there. I mean, these are fairly new tires, so they should be fine. I've not lost any pressure, but in your case, they might have been on there some time, so there's a good chance they might have some damage. Now, if you do manage to find a, a sort of some damage to your tire side, it would be that a slash or a minor nick in there. We do advise repairing that as soon as possible or replacing it if it's an especially bad one. Now you can, we did do a video on sewing up the sidewall slash on a tire. Basically you stitch this up, you patch it on the inside and the vulcanizing solution on the outside. It does mean that that tire is suitable for use until the tread does wear out, but it's not always that easy. If you wanna find out how to repair a tire slash, just like the one we've just shown you, the link is in the description below this very video. So it's a really good one to know how to do that. And it does save you some money and at least in the short term. Now, as I'm sort of working my way around the wheel, I'm just looking for any sort of visible damage to the rim. I want to make sure the spokes are all sort of fairly evenly tensioned. Nothing is sort of out of place or loose. I'm also having a look at the disc rotor, making sure it's not warped, making sure everything runs nice and freely in and true. There shouldn't be any sort of visible damage to the bike. I want to make sure there's no play in your bearings. Don't forget, this is just a sort of a spring clean on the bike. It's not a full service. You just want to make sure your bike is in good condition and everything is working so you can hit those trails. Now, if you run any sort of tubeless tires and you've been doing this for any sort of length of time, you'll notice that over time the sealant does dry up. So you do need to keep an eye on this. And it will certainly depend on the sealant you use and the weather conditions you ride in. Here in the UK, I tend to top up my tire sealant maybe once or twice a year and it tends to stay pretty good but something that does tend to happen quite a lot is the valve cores get clogged up. So I do recommend making sure you take your valve cores out and picking out any bits of rubber that are clogging them up. It normally happens at the bottom end here, which is going on the inside, and that's what hampers air getting into the valve. Now, what tends to happen as a result of this is if you have a puncture when you're out on the trail, or even if you just want to top up on air, you'll end up bending your valve core, and it will be the day you don't have a spare one with you. When you remove your pump, the core comes out, you lose all the air out of your tire. You're forced to set your tire up with a tube on the inside, a lot of faffing, a lot of mess. Now, if you keep your valve cores clean and clear and make sure that they're not bent, they're not gonna let you down on a ride. That is exactly one of those sort of things that you wanna be doing to make sure your bike is ready for the trails this spring. Now, whilst you have the valve core out of your bike for cleaning, give the wheel a little shake. You notice on this particular one, I can't hear any sealant inside, which suggests the sealant is actually kind of dried up. So I'm gonna take opportunity of the valve core not being there and put some fresh sealant in through that empty valve. Best way to do that is with a basic syringe. There are various ones available on the market. And you can quite simply suck up some sealant and pour it straight in. Now, I can't recommend using a syringe for putting fresh sealant in enough because it does mean you don't have to reseat your tires again. So everything is gonna be perfect as soon as you reinflate, and you won't need to use the compressor to reinflate it. So. My valve core is nice and clean. I've got some fresh sealant in there. It's just a case of putting some fresh air in. So next thing whilst at the front of the bike you want to pay attention to, check out your brake caliper, make sure it's securely fastened to the bike. And you want to make sure the brakes are working well. Now do your brakes pull all the way to the bars? In this case, they feel absolutely fine. They feel they're pulling all the way to the bars. It's either an indication they might need bleeding or perhaps your brake pads are worn. So the best way to check that is to simply remove the wheel from the bike. Of course, if your brake pads are worn out, you definitely want to be replacing those as soon as possible. 
Whilst the wheel's off the bike, just want to inspect the disc rotor and just look at the braking surfaces. If you can, avoid getting your fingertips on the actual braking surfaces because you have got oil in your fingers that can affect the brake pads and those braking surfaces. What you're looking for is any sort of heavy pitting or any sort of ridges that have been, or scores even, in the rotor surfaces that might have happened from worn out brake pads or if they look glazed or polished over. If that's the case with rotors, you can clean them with isopropyl alcohol and get some fine emery paper on them to restore some of that sort of grain to them and re-bed your brakes in. As with brakes, because they're a safety thing, you heavily rely on your brakes. I recommend doing it sooner rather than later. So now it's just a case of removing those brake pads and inspecting them to make sure that there's plenty of life left on them. Depending on the manufacture of your brakes, they remove in slightly different ways, but they all tend to have a retaining bolt and then one of these sort of spring washers between the pads. Now, as you can see here, there's plenty of life left on those. What you're looking for is plenty of the pad in relation to the backing plate. If your brake pads are in bad condition, then replace those pads at this stage. Very easy to do. You literally simply pop them back in and they will be brand new brake pads ready to go. Of course, you do have to bed them in as per a new set of brake pads. If your brake pads are fine and your lever is pulling all the way to the bars, it's very likely that you're going to need to bleed those brakes. There's a link in the description below this video of how to bleed these very brakes, which are SRAM guide brakes with the bleeding edge port on them. And there's also links in that video for Shimano and other Avid or SRAM brakes. So next up at the front of the bike, obviously you want to make sure that all your controls in your cockpit is safe, but assuming that is, you want to make sure your transmission and your gears are working nicely. So I'm just going to run the bike through the gears and my shifter actually feels really nice and smooth and indexing is still good on the bike. However, it's very common after a winter's ride in that your gear shifting is going to be quite stiff and that's down to one of two things. Either water and muck has got into the outer housing and it's either corroded the inner cable or it's just generally causing additional friction or there's some friction inside the shifter. Now in this case, I know that my gears are working fine but I'm still going to put some grease on the inside of the shifter because it helps keep rain from getting into that cable in the first place. Now I like to use a very thin spray grease for this and the reason for that is it stays in place and helps form a really good barrier but it's not so thick that it congeals or gets in the way of the actual shifter action. So depending on your shifter it's going to be slightly different. It's a three millimeter bolt on the top of this SRAM X01 shifter and you just simply take the cover off and you get access to the inside of the shifter there. So I'm just gonna slacken it off, put a bit of a rag underneath here just to catch any spray that goes where I don't want it to. Just make sure I get some, just go into where the water can get into the actual outer housing. Nicely done. Wipe off any excess, it's gonna help attract dirt and muck and grind to your shifter, and then replace that cover. If your shifting does feel stiff and it's not the shifter itself, then you're going to need to either flush out the outer housing at the very least or replace the gear inner cable. More than likely, you're going to need to flush out the outer housing and replace the inner cable, but sometimes if it's in that bad of a state, you're going to need to replace the outer housing as well. So in this particular case, it's working just fine, but if you want to replace your inner cable, this is how you do it. So you simply remove the top of the shifter, just like I showed you to grease the inside. I would still replace some of that grease on the inside there. And then start threading through that new inner cable so it comes out of the barrel adjuster. Make sure the barrel adjuster is wound in. I would always be inclined to unwind it one click, pull it all the way through, replace the cover on the shifter and refit to the bike. Then just flush in some lubricant through the outer housing before threading the cable into that. Following winter is a good time to replace things on your bike because you've got the maximum use in the bad conditions. You want to start the year off with a nice fresh drivetrain, so if you do need to replace your chain, now's the time to sort of check it just to see how it is wearing. Use one of these chain checker tools and you can check the wear on it. In fact, this one's so new, I can barely get the chain into the tool itself. So this bike's literally a few weeks old, so as I expect, it's not worn at all. Now it does depend if your chain is 8, 9, 10, 11 or 12 speed, there's always recommendations on the checkers. New chain between 0.25 and 0.5 and replace it at 0.75. So it does vary between 11 and 12 speed chains, but it's a good recommendation to get one of these. Uh, this is a slightly more expensive chain checker tool, but there's a more basic one. It's literally a set of plates that just chock into your bike. Cost you about 10 quid or about 10 bucks. Well worth having. 
If you change the chain in early spring, just before your sort of summer season kicks off, you're gonna have a nice fresh drivetrain with accurate shifting for at least most of the season, depending on the conditions you, you ride in and how often you ride. It's quite likely that I'll be running this chain this time next year. So obviously the drivetrain is nice and clean on the bike. For indexing the gears, all you're looking for is just to make sure that one click equates to one gear change. Nice and simple. And you can pretty much check this on the first three or four sprockets, just ensuring the chain hops up and down. If the chain doesn't hop up immediately, if you turn the barrel adjuster on the shifter counterclockwise, so anti-clockwise, quarter or half a turn, keep doing that until it shifts up cleanly. And then repeat for the first three or four sprockets in both directions, and then you'll find it should shift all the way to the top. Once at the front of your bike, you want to pay attention to your suspension forks. Over the time during the winter, they can ingest a lot of mud and muck, so it is a really good time to consider doing a lower leg service. A lower leg service is something fairly basic that everyone can do at home. If you're not comfortable doing this, of course, your local bike shop can do it for you. If you want to find out more on doing a fork lower leg service yourself, it's a fairly similar principle on Rox, Fox, Rox, Suntour, most of the common brands of forks. There's a link in the description below. But you can do a nice visual inspection in the meantime, so make sure that the seals are very clean, there's no visible damage to them. The key ultimately to suspension forks working well is them being clean. So of course, doing a major lubrication on the inside of the forks is done with a lower leg service. Now you can roll back the garter spring and then get some sort of silicon fork lube spray on the stanchions here and cycle it a bit and you can help pull out some of that muck that's initially under those seals, wipe it off and replace that garter spring. That's a good idea just to do as routine maintenance, just to make sure that there's no sort of drying out going on on your fork legs, but of course the real work is done in a lower leg service. If you have a dropper post on your mountain bike, you want to make sure that's functioning correctly, goes up and down correctly as it should do and it's not sticky. Now the first thing is to check that the shifter or sort of the remote for it is working correctly. This particular one is cable operated. I noticed that the operation on it is nice and smooth. I don't need to replace this cable. And generally they're pretty good, I think. You don't need to do it too often. If yours is a hydraulic one like the RockShox Reverb, there is a chance you might need to do a bleed on the shifter itself. If that's the case, then there's a link in the video description below to how to bleed a RockShox Reverb lever. But if yours is like this one, it's very easy to replace the cables. But there is another bit of maintenance really worth doing. And it's very similar to fork seals and making sure your forks are working correctly. But on many of the seat posts, you can actually remove the seal and you can clean under this very easy. So I'm just gonna check the operation of this. Just sliding it up and down, and it actually is sliding okay, but I'd rather be on the safe side and make sure it's working nicely. So I'm just gonna undo this dust seal here, and slide this up, and I'll get access to the bush under there. Make sure it's all nice and clean around here. And if you use a quality suspension lube or a suspension grease, just under here, it can help purge out any sort of nasty grits and grease that's found its way into the seal and make it feel very smooth in operation. And actually it does feel a lot smoother straight away, so it goes to show that even one that feels like it's in good condition can benefit from a bit of grease. Now I'm just gonna wipe the surface over because you don't want too much to stick to this. And you're good to go. And something else I really like to do, I do this to be honest every time I clean my bike, but it's a really nice thing to do in spring just to keep your bike a bit cleaner for a bit longer is to polish the frame up a little bit. Now there's various different frame polishes out there. They're normally quite silicon based. You can just bring your frame up to a bit of a gloss and just like when you wax your car, it just helps dirt and other muck stop sticking to your bike in between bike cleans. Especially good for those wet days when you're out on a trail and it's just muck that's just gonna stick to it. So there you go, they are the basics for a spring clean on your bike and getting it ready for the trails this spring and summer. Hopefully some of these tips would have been helpful for you. If you wanna find out how to do that fork lower leg service, which is applicable to most suspension forks out there, click down there. It's a really useful thing to do. You can do it a couple of times a year and it really does make a difference to how your suspension forks perform. If you want to find out everything about getting your gears indexed and how to accomplish perfect shifting, click up there. As always, 
click on the globe to subscribe and share it around. We've got brand new content for you every single week. And if this video has been useful for you, give us a thumbs up.